This is pampering, right? It's beautifying. <laughs> On the mouth, it says it's a magic mouse face mask. Okay, it's the scariest mouse I have ever seen. Look, you can talk. Oh, you have got little whiskers here. Oh, nice. You're also dripping. Whose idea was this? I don't know how you spend your new year, but... How's it feel? Stecky. And nice? And stecky. Oh, that's a shame. Hi guys, it's Leanne, and I have... Me! Lovely wife Helen. I have lovely wife Helen, who one day I will force to submit into actually introducing herself that way, but apparently not today. No. So, in all of my end of year polls and in all of my asking what you guys wanted to see at the start of this year, the thing that you wanted to see the most was me being tortured when I picked my TBR. So, as requested and as promised, I wow. need to pick. My hands are a bit dry. That was like that was like one of those snakes that rubs its scales together. <laughs> like, do it again. It's quite impressive. You could use that as a sound effect. Okay. Lovely wife Helen is going to pick my TBR for this month. It's going to be good. <laughs> Lord help me. For those of you who are brand new here for the new year, I play a game every month with myself called Stack It, wherein I go through my shelves, I pick all of the books that I want to read for the month, and I put them in a stack. And whatever order I put them in that stack is the order that I have to read them in. There are a few sundry rules which I will pop down below, but basically that's as complicated as it gets. I have to read from book one to book whatever 101 I have picked, and if I want to skip a book, I have to DNF it and unhaul it, because chances are, if I'm not in the mood for it then, I'm probably not going to be in the mood for it ever. 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 So we're in this jaunty standing angle that you don't usually... I, I don't know how comfortable I am with having more than, like, half boob up on the camera, but never mind. It just makes me look short. It makes you look tall, so... Can't be good, but can't that be bad. You are short. I know. And I am tall. I know. <laughs> and adorable. Thanks! Mm. It works. If you fish, it works. <laughs> so I have no idea what lovely wife Helen has picked for my TBR, and I'm going to go around my shelves grabbing it, unless it's downstairs, in which case I'm going to put a picture up because it's New Year and I have eaten my weight in crap and I'm lazy. Yeah, I am. Are you ready for torturing? Yeah, for torturing you, yes. Not being tortured for a change, yes. What do you mean for a change? Nothing at all, darling. So I get to choose the books that I want Leanne to read. So that's exactly what I've done. The ones that I want you to read, not necessarily the ones that you want to read. Great, great. I'm blaming y'all for this. This is all y'all's fault. <laughs> so how many books have you picked? Six, I believe. Great. So uh, that's six. Is a, six is a decent number. I can get through six and then potentially I can... Read something you actually want to read. Yeah. <laughs> what is book one? Book one is Andy McNabb. Oh. Crisis 4. So that you read it to me because I want to read it. This would come under the special rules category because I can only read to lovely wife Helen when we are both doing something. So when Helen's cooking or driving and I am a passenger or being lazy and then I can read bits and Helen usually like carries on doing things. So we can only do that when we're both not working and it will probably take us the whole month to get through the book but that's fine. Oh, this is a long book. But I have to say, the first oh. book in this series, Remote Control, we just, we flew through. We absolutely flew through it. So, I'm actually not sad about this. I'm quite happy about this. I'm very happy about this. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> this is the Next Stone series by Andy McNabb. And Helen actually had owned these books for a really long time and really, really loved them. And I poo-pooed them and I was all, I don't like spies. And I don't, there's a lot of dust on this book. I don't like spies, and this is how we dust our books in this house. <laughs> and a boob shine. <laughs> you can't argue with the boob shine. <laughs> and then Helen was finally like, just, 
just freaking read it. Just we'll read the first book together, just freaking read it. And so we did and I loved it. <laughs> Spoiler, it might actually be on my top ten books of 2019. <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, the Nick Stone series is about an ex SAS operative, Nick Stone, who in the first book, Remote Control, is working as a deniable agent for government, right? So, any of those dodgy little things that they don't want to be seen to interfere with, he goes and does. With the full understanding that if he's caught, anything goes wrong, or they need to pull out and they can't tell him in time, he's on his own. He's completely on his own. His mission gets cancelled though and he thinks, ooh, free American holiday for a day. And so he decides to go and visit an old friend. He calls ahead and he takes off. He is less than 20 minutes away and when he gets there the entire family, save for one extremely annoying, precocious little girl who is possibly one of my favourite characters mm. in the entire freaking world, has been slaughtered and he realises that he's very, very much on his own. The worst has happened and now he has a small child and by the way he doesn't like small children or children at all. Yeah, I mean that's one of your worst fears, Absolutely right? Ne <laughs> next to nappies slash diapers. That's a no. I have an ambition to never change a nappy. I'm nearly 50 and still no nappies changed. I'm doing well. She better be careful though because one of these days she might be changing my nappy and then she's going to have to take <laughs> it all back. So this is the second book in the series and from the tiny little glimpse at the synopsis that I've had without spoiling myself, it involves a woman from Nick's past who is uh, similarly involved in some counterintelligence type stuff. So. Yeah, these books are full of British humour. They're really, they're really close to the bone. They're quite sweary, so I'm going to warn you about that now. It's kind of proper like proper English swearing as well. Proper English swearing. Yeah, there's a lot of bollocks slung about, slung about that. <laughs> That's a mental image. I'm not going to get away from. <laughs> oh, no. It's a lot like watching a James Bond film in book form, but with better characterisation, an actual. Drinking. Not that I'm advocating that drinking has to be in every book, but if you're going to at least let's not order a weak martini. <laughs> and that's the tea. Okay, so excuse me, librarian. There is the first book in the stack. What is book two? So I'm back now. Book two is Crazy Rich Asians. Oh, okay. So far I'm not hitting this <laughs> list. So Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan of course took Booktube by storm, like not last year but the year before. Everybody was talking about it and of course the movie came out in 2019 and uh, it's it has been on my TBR. I have it on Kindle and you have it on audiobook so I might steal yeah. The audiobook. I would recommend that. Yes. <laughs> Is it a full cast audiobook? No, um, but there's some Chinese words and sayings and things ah. that will be better to be read to you than to try and work okay. out for yourself. Uh, and also some of the pronunciations of the surnames of people um, I think would be better spoken. Okay, alright, so it looks like we're listening to that one on audiobook. I don't know much about Crazy Rich Asians, so I'm going to give a synopsis of what I know and you can confirm mm -hmm. or deny. Okay, so... <laughs> Watch Leanne show her ignorance. From what I understand it, it is about a young man who is a Crazy Rich Asian young gentleman. He's from a very rich family, yes. Okay, and he decides to become engaged to someone who is not from his class. He decides to take his girlfriend to Asia to meet his family ah. and people assume that they are going to get engaged. Oh! And from what I understand it has an extremely grumpy, insane grandma character. Oh yes. Okay, so I mean that, that just wins for me because you guys know that we love the Stephanie Plum books by Janet Ivanovich and I want to be Grandma Mother when I grow up. <laughs> With her weird pink rinse hair, her obsession with going to other people's funerals for the free food and the extremely large gun that she keeps in her handbag and can't really use but it makes her feel good. And everyone else feels scared. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so imagine Crazy Rich Asians being popped as the next book on the stack and now we're on to book three. Yes. Bye. 
<laughs> we should point out that the place that Helen keeps going is to check her phone because although she wants to torture me, holding six books in her head with titles and authors is just never going to happen. <laughs> and now that I've said something, it may not happen now, so let's test it. What's book three? That was a long time ago now. <laughs> now this one... It's just freaking rude. It is. This one you might not be quite so pleased about. Clan of the Cave Bear. Okay, I'm not... I'm not displeased. Okay, again, Clan of the Cave Bear is one of your favourite books. I have reread it, yes. Yep, which uh, I've reread it. So that's how Helen's yardstick works for favourite books. If you've read it more than once, it's a favourite book. <laughs> okay, and it's the first one in a long series. Mm -hmm. It's about six or seven, I think. Okay, and again, I don't know that much about it, so I'm going to attempt to describe. It is about a woman mm -hmm. from a I don't know what the right term here is prehistoric maybe I don't I don't don't shoot me if you're actually a history person and know like actual time periods and stuff and you're gonna tell me I'm using the wrong phrase a woman from caveman times who becomes separated from her own clan she, yeah, yes she does and has to assimilate into a new clan Sort of. Sort of, yes. Okay. Yes. So she, there are two clans or types of humanoid at this mm -hmm. time. The, the real cave people and the slightly more developed cave people. Okay. So we're in the process of development. Yes. And she is in, born to a family of the slightly more developed cave people. Okay. And it's no spoiler because it's in the first chapter. Um, at the beginning of the book there's a huge earthquake and her family disappear and she's left and the more prehistoric cave people find her and take her into their clan Ooh. but she has different so abilities sure. uh -huh. than, than, and she's a baby at the time so she's, she, she doesn't know anything so she's completely brought up with them but they have physical and mental differences that are going to cause problems for both sides through the coming years Ooh. and social problems as well. So that's another one that you've got on audiobook. Mm -hmm. I don't own the physical book however I think that the physical book I could use as a doorstop possibly for an industrial roller door. They are quite chunky. Yes yeah, so um, what I'm going to say is I'm going to th think I'm probably going to listen to that one on audiobook possibly at more than one speed. <laughs> Uh, if there are physical books that I have on my list I might have to listen to this one alongside reading some of the physical books because I think that the, otherwise this one will be the only one that I read the whole month that that could be a long month yeah yeah I didn't expect that that was unexpected I am to please okay so again metaphorically put another huge book so we really we would be starting on this shelf yeah you don't look very happy I'm worried. That's my worried face. Possibly you're sleeping on the couch face. What is book number four? Well, you don't like hype very much. But this was hyped a very, very long time ago. Okay. So maybe you can get on board now. Okay. Girl with a dragon tattoo. Okay, so I'm... Um, I don't know why I'm surprised that this one is on the list because I shouldn't be because it's one of Helen's favourite books and I've just it is the hype it's nothing to do with the fact that I don't think I would like the book in fact I think there's a good chance that I will enjoy the book and have to swallow my pride which is another thing that I don't particularly <laughs> like doing but it's, it's never it's never been on my list it's never been on my list also uh, Stieg Larsson's never really been on my happy list either so I don't know much about this except that it's about a possibly homicidal mania and some international intrigue that is literally all I know about it I know nothing else good with computers kicks ass that also important but bits. why why is she why do I care about her bad bad things have happened to her and she wants revenge right well bad things have happened to me and I want revenge but that doesn't mean I'm gonna read a book about me like what is the actual plot about this book <laughs> what, 
What actually happens? What's the premise? Don't ask me that. I can't remember that. Okay, I need a phone. Also, this is going to disappoint many readers, but Bianca broke, so now we have Arthur Shelby. I just, just accept it. Just accept it as I have. That it is the sad moving on of the years. It's 2020 now. Rip Bianca. Um, what the hell, Goodreads? I'm being more specific and you're getting less real results. So it is apparently about Harriet Vanger who was a scion of one of Sweden's wealthiest families who disappeared over 40 years ago and it's about an investigative journalist who is hired by their uncle maybe? Somebody? To find out what really happened and Lisbeth the tattooed punk prodigy is there to help and okay so the premise of that one actually sounds like something that I you might like it you might. I don't have to say that I like it. Yeah. And that I was right. And we can put it on the calendar. Because that doesn't happen very often. It will be your first one of 2020. Yes. We really do put it on the calendar. We honestly do. <laughs> I'm obnoxious. So I actually have that one on Kindle. And I know that you have the audiobook of it. So again. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Yay. Real book this time. Physical one. One that you have to pull off my shelves? Yeah. Or I have to, do you know where it is? Yeah. Shall I get out of the way? No. Oh, where is it? Right behind you. The blade itself. Oh, yay! Here we have The Blade Itself by Jo Abercrombie, which is a fantasy book, which I have to admit I have been craving fantasy books. I didn't do many fantasy books at all in no. 2019. I mean, I did Terry Pratchett, mm. which is fantasy, but is a very particular kind of fantasy, but sort of like typical high fantasy. I didn't do a lot of, and so The Blade itself is a welcome addition to this TVR. Thank you, God. <laughs> <laughs> Curiously enough, I have actually started this one a couple of times. In fact, I can tell where I've got to because there's a small crick. Oh no, there's actually a bookmark! Bookmark! Even it'd be even better. Yay! I mean, I will start, well start again though, but because it's not that long. But, um, so I think I'm maybe like, okay, so like 40 pages in. Uh, and I really like this one. I don't know why I put it down. It was probably before Stack It, before I forced myself to get to the end of a book. And so I was probably still doing my book dating thing where I pick up 10 mm -hmm. books and start reading them and then one or two sort of like get ahead in the race and the rest just kind of sit in a sad abandoned pit. What? Gonna say go back onto my shelves, but that would be a lie. Yeah. <laughs> they just sit in a pile on the floor for a long time until I'm like, no, I have given up on them now, they can go back. Yes. From what I remember, this is about Logan Half Half Fingers? Nine, nine fingers. Fi nine fingers. Okay, I was close. Who is a sort of for hire burly guy with a sword? Well, if you kind of think of Logan from Wolverine, yep. that kind of character, really. Okay, so he's he's him but with a sword yep. instead of. Yeah. That from was my me. sound effect. Did you like that? <laughs> Um, and then about, I remember Glotka, so it's about three characters, so it's about Logan who is a barbarian who has finally run out of luck apparently and he's been left for dead, I know that, that happens very very early on like in the first five pages and then it is about Inquisitor Glotka who is a self-professed old cripple who is done with this life and everybody in it and thinks everybody is trash and is given a mission which is clearly kind of a suicide mission like uh, do this and we're gonna kill you, don't do it and we're gonna kill you so you might as well do it and then somebody else who I haven't met yet Jezel Dan Lathur, a paragon of selfishness has nothing more dangerous in mind than winning glory in the fencing circle but war is brewing and on the battlefields of the frozen north they fight by altogether bloodier rules mm -hmm. mm. So this is the first book in a trilogy, isn't it? This is the First Law trilogy. And you're of the opinion, having read a lot of the books that are set in this universe, because there's this trilogy, then there's other books, isn't yeah. there? You're of the opinion that the first trilogy is the best trilogy. Personally, yes. The other ones are okay, yeah. but they never quite make it to here. Nope, I agree. Okay. That. Yep. And also, with these ones, for all the characters you come across, you like them, but you also don't like them. 
<laughs> I like that. I like characters that you're rooting for because they're the least scummiest of the scum. Yeah. <laughs> I like that, especially in fantasy. I'm sick about reading about kings. Nobody wants to read about kings anymore. I don't. We're not doing Sword in the Stone here. Okay, so I mean, realistically, it's probably <laughs> up here, but I put it there. I put it there. There's more. One Isn't more. There one more. Yeah. Okay, sure. I didn't even need my phone that time. I remembered. Oh, that means it's going to be one that's going to cause me physical pain, isn't it? No! It's just one we've already talked about before. Alright, what is it? Major Pettigrew's Last Stand. Oh, yeah! I'm excited for that, so I'm definitely going to be listening to that on audiobook as well, because yep. you have the audiobook and I don't think I have... I definitely don't have a physical copy, but I don't think I have it on my Kindle either. This was one of your favourite books. Was it last? Was it 2019 or was it 2018? Meh. I love it, don't know when. Because Helen does not actually have to make any kind of top 10 list, although if that's a video that you want to see, I can force her to do that. Because um, she's married to me. <laughs> and that's how marriage works. <laughs> and it is a general fiction book, yes. I think we would say, about... Okay, so I know quite a lot about this one, despite having not read it, because I have heard so much about it. So Major Pettigrew is a retired gentleman living in a small quite quaint country village in England yes. who likes things the way that he likes them, keeps his own rules and morals yes. and then is surprised at the very beginning like in the very first chapter by the death of his brother Yes. All right? and that sort of spirals events and he is forced to meet, talk to and work with the Asian shopkeeper in town who nobody has really accepted because it is a small quaint English village town where anybody of anything other than white cisgendered ethnicity and sexuality is not accepted or seen and he's forced to sort of look within um, and change the way that he thinks about yeah. things too. Ah yeah that's a good one I, I like him. that. Aww. What was the sentence that you said to me as soon as you finished that book? Uh, I want to be Major Pettigrew when I grow up. Okay, so I'm going to be Grandma Mozart. <laughs> You're going to be Major Pettigrew. Yeah. I don't know which one of those is better. I guess I'll find out when I read the book. I think you'll win, whoever. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma Mozart will win everything. Absolutely. The only person who could be better than being Grandma Mozart when I grow up is Granny Weatherwax. But I just don't have her poise mm. or patience. Okay. Granny Weatherwax plays the hating long game. <laughs> I I play the short explosive move on long game because I don't have patience. Mm. Any patience. No. Okay, so that is not actually a bad stack. That is not. You only screwed me with two books. Yeah. I didn't expect the. I, I didn't expect those choices. Um, I have a few books that I think I'm gonna throw in the end of this stack, but I'm gonna do it in secret, and I'm not gonna tell you guys what they are. And uh, we'll see, we'll see at the end of January when I do my tops and bottoms, which one or two on this list I have put in the top and I have put in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Interesting. They all asked for this. I hope you're happy. I am. I'm not. Uh, well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not as devastated as I thought I was going to be. I thought I was going to be like. <sighs> but I'm just kind of like. I'll take that. But definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> and if you guys have read any of the books on this list, as always, please let us know in the comments. Helen will be very pleased if you tell me that I should read any of these books and that I should have read them a long time ago. And uh, if you are like me and are a bit like <laughs> about some of the choices on this list, please also let us know that because I like opinions, especially when they don't agree with lovely wife Helen's and instead favour mine. We hope you guys are having a awesome awesome new year that it is not new year new you but instead new year still awesome you and that you are all like us celebrating with a crap ton of food and enforced family time because we want you to suffer too if there are any other weird and crazy picks my tbr things that you would like to see please let me know and um i will try and arrange to torture myself further for you and in the meantime I have been me and you have been me. Say it! <laughs> Say it! She has been lovely wife Helen. I am off to beat her up. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Say it just for me. No, I said. That was just for you, not for them.